total internal reflection and dispersion. When you see the pause video marker, please pause the video and take great notes. Total internal reflection is a phenomena that happens when you're going from a medium where the wave travels more slowly to a medium where the wave travels uh, faster. When that happens, if you recall from refraction, we uh, the wave comes out and refracts and bends out away from the normal. And so when the angle of incidence gets greater, this refracted angle gets even greater and bends away from the normal even more. Well, as this incident angle keeps getting greater and greater, this refracted angle keeps bending more and more and more, and you'll finally get to a place right here where you reach a critical angle. And the critical angle is the angle where the refracted wave is refracted at 90 degrees and would just be skimming along the surface here and uh, most of the energy would be reflected then. As you go from these uh, smaller angles of incidence, there's not as much reflected energy and more refracted energy. As you continue along here, the refracted or transmitted energy gets less and less and the reflected energy gets greater and greater. When you get past the critical angle, just even slightly past the critical angle, no more of the energy comes out into the slower uh, I'm sorry, into the faster medium. All of the energy is reflected back into the slower medium and therefore the uh, there's reflection on this uh, at this interface and no energy comes out. It's a really strange phenomena and uh, so everything from this point on we just have wave reflection and it obeys the law of reflection in that the incident angle and reflected angle are equal and on opposite sides of the normal. So that's total internal reflection. Once you get past a critical angle, the wave is totally internally reflected. Here are a couple of pictures that show just that. Here is a crocodile underneath the uh, water here. And this, the water is so still that it's very perfectly mirrored on the underside of water. So we're underneath the water and we're seeing this crocodile, we're seeing a reflection of the crocodile from the undersurface of the water here. Same thing true for this fish. This is the mirrored part of this fish so that we're getting a reflected angle to our camera lens on the, on the underside of the water here. None of this light is getting out of the water. It's being reflected back in. This is a top-down view of a ripple tank and the wave generator here is making plane waves that are incident in this direction coming in. There's a transition here between shallow water and deep water. So the waves are going more slowly here and then they're going to pick up speed here. And you can see the refraction is uh, bending away from this normal line. It bent this way away from the normal line. And we're going to see that, that uh, as we have the angles of incidence get greater and greater, this is going to bend more and more until we reach that critical angle. And once we reach that critical angle, um, you're going to see total internal reflection. The 50 degree waves are bent away from the normal. The 60 degree waves are bent away from the normal. These waves are reflected at the boundary. This is in my list, my top 10 list of craziest phenomena. Uh, if I drag my finger across the ripple tank here, I don't feel anything. This, this is not a barrier. This is a transition between shallow water and deeper water over here. This is a couple of centimeters deep. This is about uh, two centimeters deep, and this is about a half a centimeter deep or so. And there's nothing, nothing, no barrier stopping this wave from coming in here, and yet it is reflected at this transitional point. So uh, total internal uh, reflection is a crazy, cra crazy phenomena. Again, these waves are being reflected away even though there is no uh, physical barrier here. It's just going from shallow to deep. Crazy stuff. The light is reflected back. Light always travels along reversible paths. Once the critical angle is exceeded, the ray is totally internally reflected. The internally reflected ray obeys the law of reflection for different angles of incidence. 
if they kept bending the mirror that's here, reflecting the light back up at greater and greater angles here, the incident angle would be greater and greater, and the light would just continue to reflect at an equal angle back into the water. None of the light's energy would come out. We're going back in time, back to the 1950s, and uh, we're going to a swimming pool here so we can take an underwater camera with a scuba diver uh, underneath the, in the pool so we can see total internal reflection. The appearance of the girl on the edge of the pool looks normal because the cameraman is looking up nearly perpendicular to the surface. As he moves away, the angle of incidence at the water surface increases. We see her feet below the water, an upside down pair of feet just above her real feet, and her body separating from her feet. Notice that what you see depends on your location along the bottom of the pool. As the cameraman moves away from the edge of the pool, total internal reflection occurs. This is what produces the image of the upside down feet above the water surface. One technology that uses total internal reflection is uh, fiber optics. Here we have some fiber optic strands, and this is an illustration of one fiber optic strand showing what happens when light is moving in it. So a light beam uh, from usually a laser uh, will come in, and uh, when it hits here, it'll totally internal ref internally reflect, provided the uh, fiber optic strand isn't bent too dramatically. Uh, we'll always have the angle greater than the critical angle and we'll get total internal reflection and on this side it'll bounce and this side it'll bounce and it'll keep bouncing all the way down the strand and the light will come out the other end. So it's kind of like a water pipe but for light. So we have these little light pipes if you will, these fiber optic strands and they're very very fast since light's the fastest speed we can uh, carry information they're very very fast at carrying information for us so most of our telephone and and uh, cable TV and so forth is uh, is carried now with fiber optic strands using total internal reflection that's wonderful the light follows the liquid flow all the way to the bucket amazing it does this because of total internal reflection. As the light enters the stream, it is reflected as soon as it hits the interface between air and liquid. You can see here the first reflection, and then the second, and the third. This occurs because there's a difference between the index of refraction of the guide material, here propylene glycol, and the outside, air in this case. The next property of light to discuss is dispersion. Dispersion is when white light, which is made up of all of the wavelengths of light, goes from air, into glass where it moves more slowly, uh, the different colors of light are made up of different wavelengths. And so uh, they bend differently. Red doesn't bend as much as violet does, and all the other colors bend differently in between. So when they refract right here, uh, since they bend differently, the red comes out on top when it bends back uh, and refracts back out. It's up on top and the uh, violet light is on the bottom and all the colors are in between as you can see from this diagram and so that's what happens when you have white light coming into a prism it will disperse and break and spread apart into all of its component colors again red not bending as much as the violet by combining total internal reflection with dispersion which is a property of refraction, then we can understand a raindrop, what's happening in a raindrop in a rainbow. So here's our raindrop uh, for a rainbow, from a rainbow. Sunlight enters high in the sky here, and here's the normal line, and so we get refraction. Of course, red doesn't bend as much as the violet, and all the other colors are in between. When they come over to this side of the raindrop, we do get some of the light's energy coming out the other side and refracting back out and bending out, but we do get some of the light being reflected internally here. So those internal reflections come over to this side of the raindrop and then are uh, refracted upon exiting. When they refract on exiting here, notice that, uh, don't look at which 
one ray is above the other, look at the angle that they're coming down. The blue ray here is coming down at less of an angle than the red ray. The red ray is steeper here than the blue one, which is a little bit flatter. And, they're, and they are continuing to disperse. They're spreading out as they come down. Again, the red one is steeper. The blue one isn't as steep. Take note of this raindrop. So let's see how raindrops collectively combine to make a rainbow. Remember our raindrop here where the blue, uh, the violet light, is not coming down as steeply as the red light here. So the red light that you see, the red of the rainbow out here on the outside part, you see because of the raindrops that are higher in the sky because the red is coming down at a steeper angle to your eye. Around 42 degrees the sunlight uh, is different between here and here. And the white light coming in uh, dis uh, disperses and reflects and refracts and the blue light comes in at a less steep angle and therefore the violet and blue light are down at the bottom of the rainbow. So you'd be, the observer would be here and the rainbow here would be a section of a cone. There would be a cone of light coming back to your eye here and all of the possible angles for the red light would be on that rim of the cone. So obviously over here where the rainbow is, it's raining and where you're standing there is uh, there's no rain and the light uh, the sunlight is behind you. So to see a rainbow, the sun has to be behind you. The light comes in to the raindrops that are in front of you, so it's raining in front of you. And then light is dispersed, reflected, and refracted to your eye at these various angles. And uh, the light continues to disperse as it comes down. And the farther away you are, the more it will disperse, and so the bigger the rainbow will be. So again, raindrops from higher in the sky send red rays down at a steeper angle and uh, the bluer light and all the other colors are refract differently and the bluer light at the bottom sends it down to your eye at less of an angle. And again, it will be a cone-like shape from your eye uh, and that's why the rainbow is a bow shape because it's a cross section of a cone. If you could stand up high enough, let's say on a cliff, and it was raining over far away from you, uh, then you could actually see a little bit more than a, a regular rainbow. It would start to curve back around on itself, and it would almost, could be circular if it were the right configuration. Check out this video of a rainbow from an airplane, and you can see it starting to bend back around. And I hope you're fortunate enough some time to see a secondary rainbow. And uh, this is called a primary rainbow. In the secondary rainbow, light comes in from the sky at a steeper angle and goes in the bottom of the raindrops that are out here and is reflected uh, after it's refracted and reflected again and then refracted. It loses energy in two places here and here and that's why it's not as bright. The other thing that's interesting is the blue light comes down at a steeper angle and the red light not as steep and so the red is on the inside and the violet and blue are on the outside of the secondary rainbow. Again because the sunlight comes at a steeper angle in at a steeper angle here for the bottom reflection uh, the secondary rainbow is out farther in the sky than the primary rainbow is. It's between 52 and 54 degrees coming down to your eye. So to see a rainbow, you need to be standing where the sunlight is behind the sun is behind you and the rain is in front of you. And the brighter the sun and the and the more it's raining in front of you, the more chances are that you'll not only see a bright primary rainbow, but also a beautiful secondary rainbow. And scratches parting idea. And good luck as you reflect on your quest for continuous improvement.